It is time once again from All Creatures Veterinary Center. Dr. Sandu, good morning. Good morning. And uh, I've got some, some people I had actually solicited some questions from, so I wanted to go ahead and throw them your way regarding their pets. And uh, let me grab one really quickly here from uh, Teresa. And she's asking about her cat. And she says that her cat's tail is at half mast. In other words, it's not completely up, but she can't be bothered to like she can't be bothered to hold it all the way up. You know how they walk mm -hmm. around, and the, and it doesn't seem to be in any pain, but she's holding it in kind of a weird way. So it's not like it's normal standing straight up. Is there any reason that might happen? Sometimes they can have a damage to the tail if they get caught into something and they try to pull it out. It can uh, cause some issue with the muscles or also with the bones in there so the best way would be to mm -hmm. take it to the vet have them look at it and sometimes they might like to do x-rays and see the alignment and see what's going on in there and fix according to that so that's just that's not a normal thing for a cat it's not a normal something thing that should cat. be looked at yeah should be looked at it. okay uh, another question from uh, margie is why is it that what is it that elevates like liver enzymes in dogs as they get older is it all older dogs or is it maybe something that triggers that because she's had a few dogs that as they got older she either had to give them the hepatic supplements or something like that it it depends upon also the eating pattern in dogs sometimes um, a lot of time you know we like to give our pets uh, table scraps table food and uh, it's a good gesture that we feel like that we should share uh, sometimes those things can cause problem with the senior pets uh, s some of the pets can have a hepatic issues that's uh, another it's a old age factor a lot of time we use medicines for example anti-inflammatory in the dogs if they're large breed dogs we use Remedal or other drugs, Teramax, and they do have some side effects as that could be a part of it. And also with the age, there might be thickening of the bile duct, gallbladder, some hepatocyte degeneration. Those things can also cause uh, liver enzymes to go high. And usually that's sort of, a, whether it's a liquid or powder form, that will kind of keep that in balance, though, to a degree, right? Yeah, these days we have a lot of research done on, in this field, and there are a lot of supplements, actually, they can help a lot in these pets and if we start it on a early stage when we detect them and we can prolong good quality of life in those pets outstanding yeah we had uh, one of our dogs that we had for the last few years that mm -hmm. was the situation we just kind of put the little powder on his food and he lived to be almost 15 and he was a beagle which was uh, which was pretty good one more at least uh, from nancy who says why does my she's a beagle bulldog mix spin in circles in one direction and then the other in the same amount of times while panting hard is that anxiety or is it just uh, like a habit that the dog has gotten into a lot of time it's anxiety and uh, sometimes it's a separation anxiety also some dogs they do it when they feel their owner's gonna leave and they're gonna be home by themselves and beagle is one of those breed like they always like to put their nose down or they they need to be very active all the time they're hunting hound dogs those ones and they're always curious and uh, yeah that could be a behavior issue uh, I don't think it's gonna be any neurological problem because then they are totally different symptoms but this seems like more like a behavior mm -hmm. okay. and is there anything that it, that people can do about uh, separation anxiety because some dogs I, I know that like I have heard not to make a big deal about leaving that's the one thing. Home. There are a lot of tricks you can play and make them feel comfortable in, instead of just walking down, walking outside of the home. That's where they know and they don't have choice. So they're going to act like that. Uh, there's a lot of people in as a, now they're practicing behavior medicine in pets. And it's it works really good. And actually they teach you how to handle this situation and how to make it comfortable before you leave your home or if you go out and make them comfortable so that they won't be destructive, barking, and these kind of behaviors. We can eliminate those. And that's a worthwhile investment compared to sometimes the damage that uh, dogs can do or with the noise bothering the neighbors, which can cause a noise complaint because uh, animal con that is uh, an actual an animal control regulation about keeping your dogs under control from a, from a noise factor, correct? We do here all the time. We do 
consultations on these type of issues and with time definitely it's just like a baby you know you are raising a baby and you teach that baby different part in life and the same way the, the pet you have a commitment that way too well i know um my dog buddy when he was a puppy i would do that where i would just put him out for a little bit by himself for like a couple minutes at a time and then let that go and go and go and more and more time yeah. is spent and and i was able to leave him outside for a while if you wanted to stay out there uh because like puppies are like babies you know you, you have to have a, a break from them i mean or, you know and because if not you have to constantly watch them in the house and so that worked out really really well to it, he doesn't have anywhere near like those types of issues as opposed to our other dog otis who we adopted from another their family and he likes to you know if I don't catch him he'll jump up on my desk and look out the window and knock everything over so I see that that's that those types of uh, behavioral trainings I have also a friend of mine whose dog literally chewed her way into the house and tore up like the furniture because of the so, uh, yeah. separation anxiety uh, some so. of the breeds they are not they're meant to be more outside breed and when we keep them in a small house or apartment building they're definitely gonna have issue because they cannot do what they're supposed to do and they cannot burn the calories and, and energy they have so that's where we need to jump in and think about it and consult maybe their veterinarian or friends and see how they uh, took care of their pets and then go from there exactly and i've been talking with dr sandu from all creatures veterinary center on lions avenue in the victorian building it's just east uh, west of Lion or Main Street. You also have your Canyon Country Clinic, the Canyon Country Veterinary. Is it Canyon Country Veterinary Center, correct? Oh uh, yeah. Veterinary and uh, that is right there by the uh, Edwards Theater on Soledad. And so there are two locations that you can bring your pets to here in the Santa Clarita Valley and be treated with outstanding care. I take my dogs to the one on uh, Lions, and I, I'm, and it was terrific, terrific uh, service. So also, is it still if they mention KHTS when they bring their pets in? Yeah, we're gonna honor that. And that is a, a free checkup. Yeah. Awesome. We'll do check so don't forget to tell them George sent you from KHTS. Make sure or else they might go, who? <laughs> Dr. Sandu, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I'll be bringing more tra more questions in each week so that we can uh, we can get them answered for people because I think this is a really people are tuning in, finding out what's going on. Oh, and thank you. It's my pleasure. Side. You know, I can help community. That's the best way to go. Outstanding. So thank you, All Creatures Veterinary Center on Lions, just west of Main Street. You're gonna want to check it out.